I've got so many favourite memories, but because we had such a great childhood, like we were brought up on this block and around here, and he was actually quite athletic dad, so we used to play bull rush and, you know, like when we went to Queenstown in the holidays, we'd set up obstacle courses and he would, you know, he'd have to up and down with the umbrella and climb over walls and that sort of thing. He was also really good at knuckle bones, so I used to play knuckle bones with him all the time, but he could do both hands really well, so he always used to give me a bit of a thrashing in there. But, um, yeah, and I think the other thing that sticks in my mind so much is every time I told him I was pregnant, he cried. He was that good. Um, he loved being a grandfather, so, um, and that was a pretty exciting time for him, yeah. So he was quite, he's a very private person, um, he probably came back as quite laid back but he was always quite very, he loved people and he always engaged with all different types of people and um, but I'm sure his brain never stopped ticking over you know, he never used to bring work home with him when he got home at the end of the day. It wasn't, you know, like it was discussed all the time, but um, I'm sure he did think about everything that was going on all the time. Yeah, he loved, he was a great storyteller, so he enjoyed having good yarn, and yeah. Um, he was a very committed grandfather. He used to come up to our house every night um, when the boys were around about five o'clock, so I'd have these two wee boys. Um, when they were about, you know, one and two, and they'd be trying to feed them before five o'clock because uh, I knew that once Dad got there, you'd, they'd be sitting there and I'd be trying to feed them, and I'd see a bull fly past the window, and their wee heads would swing around, and they're like, Grandad! And <laughs> that was it. So if I didn't get them fed before then, she was all over, and he'd be outside playing with them in the same pit. And yeah, he was quite playful, you know. One of the values I think is that if you say you're going to do something, you follow through and that you make sure you do it. And that's a value that was fed down to us and I think one that is really important. Um, so that's something I purposely like, really try and live by. He, like, he, he really was about having a good efficient business and would rather it be a good business that people enjoyed working for. Um, and it was, you know, it always came down to people and he was a good communicator with people and he managed to get people to go along on the ride with him for that reason. So um, I think that, you know, it's, people often have memories of Dad and he, he had a great memory for remembering everyone's children's names and he would always be asking after the family and so, you know, he was really interested in what was going on in their personal lives as well. Yeah, and I think that's a great attribute. So the first truck he had was the Wheat International, which was my great grandfather's truck. And that was one I loved because we called it the picnic truck and that was the first one and it was in the home at Garage and me and my friends used to play dolls on the back of it and things. So the early collection, I suppose, it just sort of ticked away really slowly for a long time. And then it was more in the 80s and the 90s. And the excitement he felt when he found what, well, it's quite, you know, it's the thrill of the chase. He'd find <laughs> what he wanted and, and I guess that, and also the people that were involved with old trucks were such salt of the earth down, you know, down to earth people. And he really loved that. Um, so he had quite a, a, you know, a group of friends that were always hunting things out and, you know, like I say, thrill of the chase. Well, I like the Wee International just because it was the start and it was the one I remember um, as the picnic truck and actually a friend and I actually had a picnic on it one night in here not so long ago while it was in the museum, so it's quite fun. For some reason I really like an old Bedford that is, um, and it was a local old truck and it's never been done up, but it's just got so much character, which is exactly why we don't restore all of the trucks, but it's a truck that I often walk past and I think I wish it could tell stories because I'm sure it's got a great history. Well, you see, I never really loved vehicles until I got my first combi and then I sort of fell in love with combis. So, and I never intended to collect them either, but, you know, 
I guess the gene was there and off it went. But yeah, I do love the combis. Well, of course, the history of travelling around Europe in one, but I just think they're such an iconic vehicle. So there's my brother's um, Citroen, so he got that Citroen when he turned 15 and I remember mum had was actually a strip of toilet paper across the windscreen <laughs> that said Happy Birthday Harold on it. It was cream to start with and it's now maroon but he really loved that car so that special and um, a Jaguar that he also had is in the collection so they're really lovely to still have. What else is there? Of course his dad's F-150s. Um, but Mum will tell you a little bit more story around some of her favourite ones, I'm sure. <laughs> We'd been talking about it for a bit of time, but we were so involved with HWR after Dad's death that we were obviously you know, fairly fully committed there. As the years went by, we started to, uh, we looked at the Jim Cooper's collection come up for sale, and we were thinking, should we, shouldn't we open it to the public? Um, and the real push came because Invercargill didn't have any commissionable tourism products. And we started to think if we could have something that was completely different and something different from anywhere else in New Zealand, then it would draw people to the city and boost the economy. So that was sort of the, you know, the push for the commissionable product. Um, and then when Jim's collection came up for sale, it was kind of the tipping point of if we buy that collection then we need to build to fit it in and so that's how it came about really. Yeah. It's probably even more eclectic than what I originally thought it would be. It's evolved a lot over the years. People sometimes ask me if we have a collections policy I just think that would be too restrictive <laughs> because, for instance, the jukeboxes, they're such a wonderful addition to the museum because they fit well with that retro type of theme that we have going on. But if we had a policy that said we couldn't buy them, imagine that, that'd be no good. So we sort of, if it tickles our fancy and we think that it might interest some someone else, and in the museum world, of course, it's called layering, and I think that's why people enjoy Transport World is because it sort of surprises them how eclectic the collection is and just what diversity there is in here. It always intrigues me asking people on their way out, you know, what was it that you loved most? And you never know what they're going to come up with. So one woman said to me, it's the oil can collection upstairs on the mezzanine, because oil cans, if you actually take notice of them, are actually quite intricately decorated, some of them, and quite cleverly made. So, yeah, you, you just never know what it is that people are going to enjoy. You know, the truck diversity is because in New Zealand it was hard to get trucks, so we had to take what we could get, which meant that we ended up with a quite a wide variety of trucks. Also, you know, that there is just so many different layers, and of course as the gen next generation comes through, they have their interests, so that sort of, you know, the minis and the GTRs and that type of thing. So I think really it is the fact that there is something that will interest everyone. I mean, that's what we tried to achieve when we were building it. I went round, I had 10 days in Europe where I just caught the train all over Europe and went to the top 10 museums. To me, it doesn't matter what you're displaying, it's how you display it and how you tell the stories behind it. So I think that, you know, trying to have something to reach all audiences is one of the secrets. That's why we did all the wee mouse holes. And, the Lego room and you know, so it's something for the whole family. Yeah, he absolutely loved showing people through it. It gave him huge pleasure and the more they loved him and, and that is the beauty of it actually, is that's what I love, is going down and seeing the pleasure that people get out of it. I mean that's what makes it all that's why you do it, you know. And when they come at that's why I actually like working in the gift shop because the people come out and they're just like wow like that was amazing so you know like that gives you quite a kick yeah I think that he would love that his legacy has carried on and grown and evolved and that there's so much engagement and not only from me but from the whole team I mean everyone gets into it don't they so yeah
zum Gut fahren.